Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video, we are approaching the mid-course adjustment for the Ike to Jules station ship. Um, whatever you want to call it, it's going to become a station. It's sort of a ship right now, uh, but we're just a little ways away. However, we are also at the Drez window. And if you remember, we had left some deployable science on the surface of Drez with no Kerbal around to deploy it. And I would like to send, I, I hate to say this, I would like to send some Kerbals to Drez. Yeah, that's uh, words of doom. But basically, this is the time and we might as well do it because uh, we're taking a long time to get to Jewel anyway. So I'm going to cook something up so that we can land the Kerbals on Drez to deploy that science. Let's take a look if there are any contracts that we can pick up. Uh, finished construction of a rover on the surface of Drez. Well, that would require us landing somewhere else on Drez. So that's inconvenient. However, there's a lot of money involved. So, and it wasn't that hard last time. We can go ahead with that and take a look at what kind of repairs need to be made. Yeah, that's the only Drez contract, so we might as well. So we have a rover and it lacks a control core. What is with these people making rovers that don't have control cores? It's basically the same rover as last time. So we know what to do with it. It's got a fuel cell, so it can run off of that temporarily. We probably want to send a solar panel or something. But okay, yeah, we've had this experience before. Uh, that antenna is probably not good enough to reach Kerbin directly. So there is that. We might want a bigger antenna. Or we could just have a in-orbit satellite that can relay. That's a possibility. All right, let me cook up the Drez mission. Okay, here's what we've got, and I hope I haven't forgotten anything. I've got the Dress bus, sort of, uh, it's, I don't know if it's a bus per se, but anyway, we've got a Terrier engine. It's gonna land on the baguettes, as, as I do. And uh, we've got solar panels, we've got a core, you notice two cores here, that's because the top one we're going to put on the rover, that's the plan. I've got some extra solar panels for the rover and some EVA repair kits just in case. Uh, we couldn't fit the core inside the inventory here, so I just decided to put it on top there for now. Um, it, it'll be removed by the engineer uh, before we have to dock back with this to refuel. So what we're going to do is we'll repair the rover and then we are going to go back into orbit around Drez, refuel here. We've got this fuel locked for refueling the lander and then we're going to land at our science base and try and unpack all that science properly this time. We'll see. We'll see how that works out for us. But we have a relay antenna here. Uh, so I tucked it in to a engine plate, so it is a complicated business. We've got another core here so that we can control this stage, which is going to get us to Drez and also refuel the lander. And so I used an engine plate in order to uh, place that antenna in a more convenient position, so we connect it like that. And we have extra monopropellant just in case we need to top off the monopropellant on here. I don't think so. 40 should be enough for many dockings for me. Uh, we've got the little RCS thrusters as well. And we've got solar panels on here. We've got radiators because we're using the nerve engines. Uh, we plan to reuse this sort of thing uh, by refueling it on that node. And we have lots of liquid fuel, lots and lots of liquid fuel here. I used the NC adapters for the first time. I unlocked those. Previously I had used the Mark II fuselages for the nerve stage in order to just have liquid fuel. You saw that arrangement. This is an alternate arrangement where we put these tanks on top and sort of rotate them just a little bit so that they clip into the top here. I mean, actually, uh, the tank itself isn't clipping very much. I've got a small nose cone there to close off the top node. Not that it matters because we're putting it all into a fairing. We've got an extra reaction wheel here because I wasn't satisfied with the turning of our previous nuclear stage. So, supplementary there. So, I think that's about it. We've got the comms. This is going to be crude and stay crude. 
Uh, the reason we've got a uh, control unit on it is because I'm planning to send just an uh, engineer and scientist, not a pilot. And as it so happens, we've got two pilots, which we don't want in there, but we've happened to have an engineer and a scientist left. We really need to bring back some Kerbals. This obviously is not suited to bring back Kerbals right now, and we are going to have to think about that. Um, it's possible that we could just capture into orbit, because we've got a lot of delta V here, this vacuum delta V, 7,000 meters per second. It takes about half an hour to deliver all 7,000, but we're not going to use all 7,000 right away. Um, but it's possible that this could go to Drez, capture into orbit around Drez and everything, and then also bring them back, and then capture into orbit around Kerbin. I don't know, we'll have to think about that, but that is a thought. So I've got a little adapter here just to raise it up, otherwise it wasn't going to allow me to build the fairing. And I have finally discovered that we have silver fairings. There's also a gold fairing. Um, let's see, what does that look like? But it doesn't seem to actually show me the gold. So I don't know. Um, that doesn't seem to work very well. Uh, so we'll go with the silver fairing, and that does work. That is looking quite nifty. So I think we're going to go with that. And we are going to go with the mainsail launcher that I previously introduced. And this time I have made a change. Uh, so otherwise it's the same mostly except I rearranged the bottom here and instead of having a, a little heat shield to cover these elements, the controller and all, I have a inflatable heat shield. Now will that work? It sort of clips into the engine bells but I ho I'm hoping it's sort of cushiony. But will that work better than just the air brakes? I don't know, we'll see. It has a really high heat tolerance, which an inflatable heat shield probably wouldn't. This is, you know, even higher than the regular heat shield. So that's promising. It's not that much more mass, uh, so that's promising too. The thing is, we're going to have to ditch it because we're planning to land on the mainsails themselves. Which, maybe we should just splash down, because that worked pretty well last time. But... In principle, we're going to try and ditch it, and if so, we're losing 2,400, uh, but that's better than losing all the air brakes. So the goal is that this will protect the air brakes so that the air brakes can still help out and we don't have to lose them because the air brakes are 1,000 apiece. They're pretty expensive, actually. They're useful, but that's eight thousand dollars or eight thousand funds worth of air brakes there. So anyway, deflate. Um, they are just barely. I mean, the inflatable heat shield is just barely not clipping the mainsail. Considering the heat tolerance on the inflatable heat shield, I guess it could deal with the blast from the mainsails. I suppose. All right, so that's the idea. We are going up crude, which is dangerous. I've auto started this a lot. And we're sending Sidwise and Daftry, though we really need a lot more Kerbals. It's amazing that the only two that we have left are Jeb and Val, but I guess if you want to keep anybody in reserve for emergencies, it's going to be Jeb and Val, so. All right, that is the plan. Let's try and get this over to Drez. Oh gosh, the silver fairing does not look as good out here as it did in the in the VAB. It looks flat here. What happened to my shininess? That's not nice. They messed messed up my fairing. Oh well. Anyway, uh, not the biggest issue right now. SAS on, throttle is up, and we. Have actually a little bit less fuel, but more thrust to weight ratio than last time. Uh, I made the tanks shorter, so and that was mainly to ensure the fit of the inflatable heat shield. Anyway, with that note, launch. It's not happy. <laughs> we are past the speed of sound. We should be past max Q by now. Looks a little bit more silver now, but we're about to ditch the fairing, so it hardly matters. 
I kept it on confetti for safety's sake. Okay, fairing. And that's a good orbit, 102 by 100. No problems. Plenty of delta V to return. And just checking staging, that's fine. All right, separation. All right, so this is all set to go. I can get these solar panels out. They're probably good for backup purposes. I removed this tank and this tank from symmetry. Uh, initially it was all six-way symmetry and then I removed those in order to place the engines and that allowed me to put the radiators and the solar panels like this as well. Okay, so that's ready to go and with a substantial amount of delta V if it's not lying to me, <laughs> right? There's that possibility, but let's handle this enormous business. So I'm gonna move the fuel down. So, let's try and deorbit. Last time we overshot. Uh, so we'll do it a little bit ahead of the Woomerang launch site this time. I'm doing it earlier, but I'm going to keep the altitude the same because we don't want extra heat or the onset of the heat to occur more quickly. So our periapsis ends up uh, on this side of the mountains near the KSC. So that is where we're at. Okay, we've got some sound now. We actually had an eclipse briefly. Now the moon is moving on. Not that eclipses are rare around here, but... Oh, 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 things are going wrong. Things are going wrong. Why are you tilting? Why are you tilting? I did not tell you to tilt. There's no reason to tilt. Looks like we have a lot more drag this time, and we're probably going to uh, undershoot by a lot. So, actually this is a very draggy part, so my attempt to correct for the overshoot last time was... Well, it's ended up putting us into a very different position than I intended. Okay, we've got parachute deployment. Alright, we'll try jettisoning the heat shield. Oh, that didn't work at all. <laughs> Oh no. Oh no. It destroyed everything. It was good at slowing us down, for sure. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I should have waited until they fully deployed. Gosh darn it. It looks like that would have been fine. Oh well. We're probably gonna lose the air brakes on one side. Uh, no, hang on there, little guy. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about the parachutes. Hang on there. No. Oh, okay. Thank you for staying with us, parachutes. Actually, we didn't lose the air brakes. Recover? <laughs> oh, strange things. Well, we got some back, but we were further away from the KSC than I wanted to be, obviously. But anyway, on with the rest of the mission. Okay, uh, maybe we can meet, it, meet up with it at that ascending node. Well, that, not like that, we aren't. Um... Let's see, maybe we can change the timing a bit. Okay, uh, we're getting closer. Basically, I'm shifting the time we're doing it. It's costing more delta V, but if it saves us a mid-course adjustment, which, and those tend to be pretty hefty when it comes to going to Drez, then it's probably worth it. We'll have to see how much it takes to capture though. The faster you go initially, the faster you're going to be going once you get there. We'll probably do a mid-course adjustment uh, to bring the orbit really close to Drez, but let me just see how much we're talking about as far as the capture is concerned. Uh, it's 1,500. That's pretty typical. So, okay. We'll do this. And we will obey the burn time indicator. And it may... Well, we'll see. I hope it doesn't crash us into Kerbin or anything. Make sure to stay out of the atmosphere during the long burn. And go. Nice plume though. Don't know why the nozzle is like that if the plume is gonna be that small, but... Okay. We didn't add any additional science on this. I keep forgetting to add science. <laughs> I'm very, very 
focused on the mission parameters as I see it, and I keep forgetting to just slap on some minor instruments. Uh, we'll need a mid course correction. We were gonna need one anyway, but it's at least gonna be close. We don't particularly need to rendezvous with anything, so as long as we get into an inclination that can hit both that base and that rover, which are unfortunately very far apart from each other. It'd be nice if they had been close to each other, of course, but that is not happening. And that'll make orbit 1365 after we do a 50 meter per second correction as a mid-course maneuver. And this is all set. So the Jewel station correction, then the Drez correction, and then Jewel arrives at 165. Drez arrives at 136, so Drez will arrive first, so we'll do that. This is really tight on the signal strength. That's weird, I thought having two of these would be enough, but apparently not. Uh, how far out are we exactly? Not really far enough to make me happy. Gosh, uh, we're only at Drez level. That means that we only put one of these on the other mission, so that might not have been enough for that either. The Kerbin will come around on this side, and eventually that will shorten up the lines a bit, but... We upgraded the tracking station fully. We really need better dishes. At least we have Kerbals on here. So right now it's not reading this as a, a new station, and I think that's because of this pod that we grabbed onto. So what I'll try is letting go of that pod after we reach dual orbit and seeing if it'll recognize this as a valid station in that case. Maybe all the parts have to be like dated before, I mean after the contract. I didn't realize it was part by part. Um, I mean maybe if we control from here and like rename vessel from here jewel station let me see no that didn't do anything so that's my only hope otherwise maybe rescuing this pod has messed everything up for us in terms of fulfilling that contract i don't know okay and let's just go ahead well, we have a Tylo encounter, but it's not quite doing what we want it to. Let's do a maneuver when we get there to figure things out. Okay, well, there we have a Tylo periapsis and a dual periapsis that is safe. And the resulting orbit is in plane with the moons. Those are the three things we want. We want to make sure that whatever capture Tylo does for us, we stay in plane. Well, it's a little bit tilted in this direction. But it's okay, it's not the worst thing. And and that's because we're coming in high here. But yeah, in plane, safe tile periapsis, safe jewel periapsis. So this continues on its way. Now we have to focus on the Dres mission. Okay, go. Well, it still probably will work looking at it. All right, we'll, we'll go with that, and we're going to capture. Looks good to me so far. So it just so happens when we reach Drez, we will have a connection, and that's good. And the Jewel mission is here. Still not encountering Jewel. Still close. Okay, we've reached Drez SOI, and there is some science we can do, because... We didn't have Kerbals around last time. So, EVA report, keep, board, crew report, transmit, EVA report, transmit. Okay, we just can't do more science because I didn't bring it. Okay, on to periapsis. Oh, uh, we should have started the burn already, because nuclear engines.
Oh, oh, it's shaking too much. It's shaking too much. Oh god, Fizz Warp was not good right there. Let's see, 2x. We need 2x. No, we can't do 2x. We can't do 2x. It's one of those things, I guess, where you get further away from Kerbin and it's not safe. Obviously, there's minor clipping involved just for aesthetics, including the nuclear engines being clipped in here. That's just an aesthetic thing. I could have just added more tanks or something. But I don't actually like the top of the nuclear engines very much. I'll keep the periapsis at 30 kilometers, so we'll go with that. And we have captured, and let's see. Well, Dres base is there. The rover, we're, we're pretty close to the rover, actually. Um, yeah. And we wanted to do the rover first anyway. The problem is, the rover is not on the Kerbin side, so we wouldn't be able to control it anyway, so we might as well wait a little bit longer. It's drifting. Uh, at least Dredd seems to rotate quickly enough. We'll wait till it gets onto this side where there's light and the connection. Uh, no, we might be able to land there right now. Anyway, first, an EVA report and crew report, please. Not while this is swinging all over the place, though. Staff tree. EVA report. Oh, this is still high over Drez? 34 kilometers is high over Drez? Gosh. Okay. Well, yeah, let's undock here and we'll try and land. I'm gonna just overshoot to the opposite side of the crater initially. Okay. So we're going to do this correction. I chose this spot because it has the good reaction wheel, unlike the Lemish lander, which does not. Okay, we are on descent. Whatever we do with the rover, we're gonna have to do it quickly to maintain communication. And let's push that retrograde marker towards the target. Okay, well, we're definitely low now because it's not letting us time warp. So, if you would please, Staff 3, EV report, keep, board, and crew report, transmit. Oh, okay, well. Let me EVA, grab that crew report and board. All right. It's almost like this is flying with its solar panel wings and everything. There's a little vent there. I should have brought uh, like a rover arm. I didn't even use those on the moon yet. I packed them. I, I do want to get closer, even though we figured out I didn't need to be that, that close. I feel like I want to be closer. And we've got the Delta V, I think. Okay, we have landed. Right. Um, I guess our engineer. And why don't we go into engineering mode or whatever it's called. And... We can grab that and just plop it as far away. Oh, oh yeah, that's fine. Good. We can kick it. We know that. And we can... Oh, I should have left a space here so that we could move things a little bit better. Temporarily drop the parachute, get one of those solar panels, and our solar panel. Oh, we can't get both solar panels at the same time, so the parachute is going to be sitting there. Okay, anyway. Um, take surface sample, keep. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, EV report, keep. Okay, let's board with those. Crew report. Okay. 
Well, I guess we'll find a flag here. Sid wise, I didn't note the location exactly, so I'll just say Andres. I don't know what to say, so let's just get on with it. The flag already dropped. Okay, improve our kicking solution here. I guess I could just progressively plop it, you know, pick it up, drop it over there. That doesn't really go very far. Let's see there? Yeah, okay. That's probably better than kicking it. But now we can access the node, I think. Yeah, there we go. Well, it's theoretically in the right direction. Let's see. Uh, let's put a solar panel on. That'll be fine. The high gain antenna can't connect to. Oh, that's moved on. The Dres bus relay is too far away. It's beyond the horizon. So we're going to get Sidwise back in and then we're going to time warp. I want Sidwise to pick up his uh, parachute. Okay, well, I time warped, and if we go back to the rover now, it has a connection. So, okay, it's even recharging. I'll start the fuel cell, no reason not to. And we need to get to where exactly? Ah, uh, it doesn't have the marker. It's that zone. I guess I can just remember it's this direction. Let's say 140 to 150 degrees. Maybe if I directly switch to it, it'll keep that marker around. Uh, yep, yep. It looks like if I switch directly to the rover, then we get the marker. But it's not letting me activate landing, uh, activate guidance to it. Oh, there we go. All right. So are we going to be moving forward or backwards? Backwards for some reason. Uh, I mean. Let's take control from here. Okay, now it should be forwards. Though that might be more dangerous, come to think of it. But anyway, that way is. Well, we're still on the road, but I'll conduct a material study. Why not? I'm going to keep that, get something done. Though now the doors are sort of clipping the fuel cells, so I'm going to close the doors just so it doesn't look weird. I haven't had to accelerate, it's all been downhill. Okay, let's slow down. So that contract is complete at least. So many contracts. Anyway, um, so let's go back so that we can grab the Science Junior data. Uh-oh, we've lost comms. How did that happen? Uh, great time to lose comms. Oh, the satellite moved on. I guess we'll just let the fact that we're going upslope stop us. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, it doesn't seem to be stopping us much. Um, okay, change of plans. Uh, can you catch up to it, Staffery? We need we need that science junior data. Go. Can Daftry make it? Uh, oh, no, 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 okay, Daf sorry, Daftry, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, this was a bad idea, oh, 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 no, oh, come on, okay, well, she stuck the landing, all right, up again, more delicacy, please. Probably going about six. It was going about six before. Oh, oh no, no, I, I, I'm bad at eyeballing it. Is the problem? Oh shoot. I, I maybe I could just take data while flowing above. I'm trying to land on it, but that's probably unnecessary. If we could just be right above it. This is not what Daffrey signed up for as a scientist. Uh, 
collect data. Did she get it? Oh, I broke the comm unit. That was not intentional. Uh, no, she didn't get it. Gosh darn it. Oh, now we're in trouble. It's going down slope too. Oh, collect data. Uh, remove data. Okay, we got it. <laughs> oh, man. Poor Daftry. Well, she got it and still more than half of her EVA propellant left. Let's check out whatever that is while we're out here. But I think this is too big. This must be a rover one. Or maybe not. Uh, ow, ow. Yeah, this is too big. Okay, so no. Let's go to the vent, maybe. Okay, well, let's try and land in there and see if we can get something. Oh, in, in, ow. Inside, inside. Or maybe need is good enough? No, I don't think so. Maybe it's just a surface sample. I don't know. Surface sample inside the vent. Um, take surface sample. Let's see. Impact craters. I think that's just the general biome here. That was the material study. Okay, that's the sample. EV report? Well, anyway, we'll see whether it's something new or not. Can't do anything else here. Okay, board. Uh, okay, we have to dump those, so those were just duplicates. Alright, we have 835 meters per second to... not just to get into orbit, but also to rendezvous with the dress bus relay. Okay, so now we'll launch. And it should be pretty easy. Let's see. Did I forget anything? Can't think of anything. Let's go. Could have waited a little bit longer, but anyway. Okay, I'll use a little bit of RCS to correct that. It's probably close enough. Okay, now this side, while it still has communication, can we have it turn to the approaching craft? Tons of monopropellant, really. I don't want to do the next part of the Dres mission, which is to land at the base and deploy the science yet, because I'd like to get the other mission into orbit around Jewel during this video. And then we'll do further stuff with both in the next video. Okay, so we are docked, and we can transmit the stuff that isn't worth just hanging on to. So that we want to keep. That we can transmit. Oh, we don't we don't have Okay, keep keep keep. Um we don't have com right now. Let's wait. Transmit. Transmit. Okay. So that's all good and before I forget, I'll top off the tanks here. Okay, we are in Joule SOI and conducting the correction burn to ensure that we hit Tylo properly. And I would like to do this accurately, so we're waiting on the burn timer. And then we need to do some science. This is the first time we're entering Joule space, so let's see. Magnetometer. Oh, we'll have to grab that magnetometer reading. Okay, well, that'll have to be close enough. So, first of all, Gravioli. Oh, there's still data. Okay, Elon. Grab that stuff. I wish Elon could just pick it up from there, but no. Alright, um, we might as well do an EVA report. Keep. Let's observe Mystery Goo. We'll keep that. The uh, gravity data, oh, there's extra for recovery. I guess we'll keep it. Not pressure. Yeah, they all have extra for recovery, so I guess we will keep them. 
Okay, and crew report. That we can transmit. Okay, we have entered Tylo SOI, and Elon gets to EVA again and grab all the stuff. And of course, do an EV report. Okay, so, and then also a crew report, which we can transmit. I won't review all day, even though we can probably transmit the EVA report. That's what Tyl uh, sorry, that's what Jewel is looking like right now, with, of course, uh, visual mods. Not the normal green. And we are going to do the gravity data, keep. Goo, we can't do again. Pressure data, keep. Log temperature, keep. And magnetometer, keep. I'm going to assume that this is high over Tylo still. So we're not going to grab anything yet. Elon EV report. Yeah, still in space over Tylo, high over Tylo. So nothing new here. Probably the gravity data would be different though because it's a different biome. And we are in an orbit around Joule. Not really a safe, safe orbit. I mean, we could encounter one of the moons again, so we have to keep that in mind. But the point is that we should see if my theory about how to solve this contract problem is correct. We're going to undock that pod and then try and see if that works. So we can't let it go too far. Oh, it worked. Yep, that's all that needed to happen. But now that pod needs to... Um, It'd be helpful if we could have a Kerbal inside, actually. So, Tansy, EVA for me. Mm. Crew hatch is over there. Okay, grab, board. Okay, could you help point things? SAS, set as target. Okay, that's probably good enough. And this, well, we'll just maneuver the whole thing, I suppose. Well, it's interesting. <laughs> Got interesting things going on here. In theory, we should we, we should just leave Elon here, get the science out that we've already done, leave Elon here to do what scanning can be done and what other science can be done, and bring the remainder back. Because we do want to fill the rescuing Melrick and bringing Melrick's pod contract. Elon of Jewel. Okay, we got that back. Just for safety's sake, I'm going to transfer Tansy back from that pod into this command pod. Okay, so we'll think about that. It's probably not the transfer window back to Kerbin right now anyway. So this is, we'll have to pay attention to this though, because this is not in necessarily a safe orbit around Joule. It could interact with quite a lot of moons. And yeah, so we're going to need to do something with this right away. But I'll do that in the next video. We've had enough excitement this time. With that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.